Hi, my name is Regina Harris Bayaki, and I'd like to welcome you to a celebration of National Poetry Month. You're in for a treat today because not only do we have poetry, but we have poetry set to music. Another name for poetry set to music is an art song. We have art songs by the composer Margaret Bonds, art songs by Ricky Ian Gordon, and art songs by myself, Regina Harris Bayaki. You will hear the poetry of Langston Hughes, poetry of Edna St. Vincent Millay, poetry of Gwendolyn Brooks, former poet laureate of the state of Illinois, poetry by Emily Dickinson, poetry by myself, and one of my favorite poets of all times, Henry Dumas. I am joined by two wonderful musicians, soprano Ray Myra Hilliard and pianist Marta Johnson. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy art songs in celebration of National Poetry Month. Our first poem was written by Langston Hughes. Langston Hughes was the people's poet. Most of the poetry that he wrote, the average person can understand it and will resonate with it. Today we're going to be looking at dream variations. This was from the first book that Langston Hughes ever published. Born in 1900, Langston Hughes spent some time in Chicago. He wrote a column for the Chicago Defender, one of the oldest African-American newspapers in the country. And he also had a very close friend named Margaret Bonds. Margaret Bonds was a composer, a pianist, and she set a lot of Langston Hughes poems to music. This one is called Dream Variations. To fling my arms wide in some place in the sun, to whirl and to dance till the white day is done, then rest at cool evening beneath a tall tree while night comes on gently dark like me. That is my dream, to fling my arms wide in the face of the sun, dance, whirl, whirl, till the quick day is done. Rest in pale evening, a tall, slim tree. Night comes on tenderly, dark like me. And that was Dream Variations by Langston Hughes. The music was written by Margaret Bonds. So I'd like you to welcome two artists as they perform Dream Variations, our singer, Ray Myra Hilliard, and our pianist, Marta Johnson. Ah! 
next poem is titled Message to My Muse. It's a poem that I wrote in 1997 uh, because I was experiencing writer's block. I actually was tasked with writing an orchestral piece. And sometimes when I get stuck and can't write music, I write poetry. And sometimes when I get stuck and can't write poetry, I write music. It depends on where the muse leads me. So this poem is called Message to My Muse. Send me a message through the rains that will glide on the bird's wings. Let it touch me in my heart where the angel in me sings. Make me your instrument of song so the world will ever know that we resonate as one, that I sparkle from your glow. If I don't hear from you, today will be born without me. Who then will sing my song? Who else will write our wrongs? So eventually this piece was written for orchestra, but uh, this next rendition that you'll hear is a sketched
if you've just joined us, this is our celebration of National Poetry Month. And not only are we celebrating poetry, but we're celebrating poems set to music, also called art songs. Our next poem is by Henry Dumas, titled Love Song. Henry Dumas lived a very short life. He's one of the most underrated poets, novelists, and artists of the 20th century. Toni Morrison called him the best writer she has ever read in her entire life. I consider that high praise, and I'm sure once you hear this poem, you will agree. Hopefully you'll be inspired to look up the work of Henry Dumas. Love Song. Beloved, I have to adore the earth. The wind must have heard your voice once. It echoes and sings like you. The soil must have tasted you once. It is laden with your scent. The trees honor you in gold and blush when you pass. I know why the North Country is frozen. It has been trying to preserve your memory. I know why the desert burns with fever. It has wept too long without you. On hands and knees, the ocean begs up the beach and falls at your feet. I have to adore the mirror of the earth. You have taught her well how to be beautiful.
As a poet, I know how difficult it is sometimes to share your poetry. Most poets tend to be shy people who can spend lots of time alone because that's what you need to reflect and to write poetry. Our next poet, Emily Dickinson, was certainly someone you could describe that way. Most of her poems were written and put in a drawer and discovered only after she had passed. But you'll notice when you hear these words how beautiful they are. In many cases, she did not give her poems titles. Instead, she numbered them. So the title for this piece was actually assigned more than likely by the composer. But the poem, Will There Be a Morning, is set to music here by Ricky Ian Gordon, a wonderful composer and pianist. Here are Emily Dickinson's words. Will there be a morning? Is there such a thing as day? Could I see it from the mountains if I were as tall as they? Has it feet like water lilies? Has it feathers like a bird? Is it brought from famous countries of which I have never heard. Oh, some scholar, oh, some sailor, oh, some wise men from the skies, please to tell a little pilgrim where the place called morning lies. Poem by Emily Dickinson, music by Ricky Ian Gordon, we welcome our performers again, Ray Myra Hilliard, soprano, Marta Johnson, pianist. Is 
Our next piece is a solo piano piece that was inspired by one of Gwendolyn Brooks' most famous poems. And if you don't know Gwendolyn Brooks, our Mrs. Brooks, she was the poet laureate of the state of Illinois, and she was preceded by Carl Sandburg. And when he was asked, who would you like to be your successor? Hands down, he said, Gwendolyn Brooks. And of course, we know her now as a winner of a Pulitzer Prize. We know her as a poet. We know her as a mom. We know her as a mentor. And like Langston Hughes, Gwendolyn Brooks was a people's poet. She also wrote for the Chicago Defender and her tenure crossed or was uh, simultaneous with Langston Hughes. I was asked to write a piece for a group in London called the Heartbeat Academy and they wanted me to write a piece for children. So I thought, what better way to write a solo piano piece for children and introduce them to one of my mentors and friends, Gwendolyn Brooks, at the same time. And when I tell you she was my mentor and my friend, I met Miss Brooks when I was seven years old at the Museum of Science and Industry. My mother had taken me there because once a year she would invite students to come and read their poems. And I was very shy. I couldn't stand in front of the crowd at the museum, but I whispered it in her ear. And she did a rich and wonderful thing. She opened her pocketbook and gave me money. I don't remember how much it was, but I said, I'm going to keep this money forever. And then, of course, on the way home, my mother drove by the candy store, and you know what happened to that money. But it set me on a path to be a poet for the rest of my life. And I went home, and I sat down, and my mom said, you must write her a thank you note. I wrote her a note, and she responded. So from that point on, I kept sending her poems, and she became my private editor. And when I grew up and became a teacher, she came to my classroom and talked to my students. And until the day she died, she mentored me and thousands of other poets. Uh, if you don't know the story of Tavis Smiley and Gwendolyn Brooks, I urge you to look it up because he credits her with teaching him how to read at the age of 10. Gives you an idea of how fabulous this woman was. This poem, We Real Cool, is about seven pool players at a pool hall called the Golden Shovel. We Real Cool, the pool players, seven at the Golden Shovel. We Real Cool, we Left school, we lurk late, we strike straight, we sing sin, we thin gin, we jazz June, we die soon. We Real Cool by Gwendolyn Brooks. Same title of the music written by Regina Harris Bayaki.
Our next poem was written by an American poet also, E.E. E. Cummings. E.E. E. Cummings rarely used capital letters, and he wrote hundreds of poems. This poem is part of a song cycle that I wrote. I was commissioned to write, to set six songs to music. And like Emily Dickinson, he rarely used titles. But I call this love poem, excuse me, love crumbs, taken from one of the lines in the poetry. I like my body when it is with your body. It is so quite new a thing. Muscles better and nerves more. I like your body. I like what it does. I like its hows. I like to feel the spine of your body and its bones and the trembling, firm smoothness of which I will kiss again and again and again. And eyes, big love crumbs, and possibly I like the thrill of under me you and so quite new. Now that was an abbreviated version of the poem. I urge you to look it up. And again, for the first line, I like my body when it is with yours. You'll probably find it under that first line. It is a joy and a privilege to share this program with two composers, Margaret Bonds and Ricky Ian Gordon. Ricky Ian Gordon wrote a beautiful song cycle called A Horse with Wings, and the songs that you hear today were taken from that collection. This poem is by Edna St. Vincent Millay. It's titled Souvenir. Just a rainy day or two, in a windy tower. That was all I had of you, saving half an hour. 
marred by greeting passing groups in a cinder walk near some naked blackberry hoop dim with purple chalk. I remember three or four things you said in spite and an ugly coat you wore plaited black and white. Just a rainy day or two and a bitter word. Why do I remember you as a singing bird? The last piece on our program is titled Honey Air. As you may have gathered from breadcrumbs that I've dropped along the way, I am a poet as well as a composer. And this poem was written as I was spending an evening with a group of women. I founded a group of composers called Six Degrees. And we went out for Ethiopian food. And I personally don't drink, but it was nice to see my, my colleagues drinking. And <laughs> in the course of the evening, they came up with an idea for me to write a, a haiku for each one of us to set on our upcoming concert. So this is the poem that I wrote for myself. And I actually have two versions of the same haiku, because sometimes I write more than one ending, sometimes I write more than one beginning, sometimes I write more than one middle, but they're still connected. So you hear two haikus, two haiku. Deal me six diamonds, noisy air in honey wine, oxymoronic. Deal me six diamonds, noisy air in honey wine, Ethiopia. And for the haiku police who like to count the syllables, this is a five, both of these are 575 poems, but 
as of late, I've been writing fewer and fewer 575 poems. So I urge you, if you're a poet, don't uh, hold back. If your poem is 372, that's fine, as long as it's a haiku. And we are so pleased to have Ray Myra Hilliard, our soprano, interpret these two haiku, and our pianist, Marta Johnson. On behalf of Harold Washington Library, I'd like to thank you for joining our program, Art Songs in Celebration of National Poetry Month. On behalf of all the people of the city of Chicago, it is my joy, my honor, and my privilege to be standing here at Harold Washington Library celebrating April as National Poetry Month and celebrating poetry through song. So I hope you will tune in to this program again and again. It is my understanding that it will be up forever. And if you're also interested in haiku, please tune in to Haiku Festival. Thank you and be safe.